I was lucky enough. So what I did, I sold all of them, bar. I got a little spark. Oh, cute. Yeah. And I use that for everything. And I got a Mavic Pro. Yeah. So they're the two I have and I use them depending on when I need it. I love them. I still, yeah. I, the, the aerial footage of drones, you can't beat. It is nuts when they first came out. I'm glad at how they're getting used now because there was, what, in 2000 and when they became like DJI, DJI became mainstream, like yeah. 2012, 13, 14, and everyone was using them. You're watching like travel edits and all it was was drone gear. Yeah. And, and, and it got so boring. Like just every single edit you'd see was just drones of the same, like down shot. And you're like, oh, this is cool, but give me something else. But I'm glad that everyone's kind of gotten over that. And they're moving more into either FPV or just actually using all the all their gear and their kit. So you, you're, you're a photographer, mm. videographer, storyteller. And, you know, to see the, the use of a drone for videography, mm. it really does make material sp- it can make material look spectacular. Oh yeah, it's it's so good for those little shots that uh, I think the way you, I think the way you use it is important. As in, like I said back in the day, uh, people were overusing it. They're bringing it back now, and I think it's important to use it sparingly in a way that if you, uh, as not not as like a last option or resort or whatever in a way that is really gonna. If I put the drone up here, it's the shot that I'm not going to be able to get anyway else. Um, because I still enjoy like uh, a camera out of a plane window or something like that yeah. as well. But if you can get the drone um, in a way that it's not, you're not going to get any other shot. I think go for it, and and, and that, that's when it really adds the the spice to your edit as opposed to just doing it completely drone gear. Because that's all it is. It needs to be. It's a, and let's face it. If we're going to start talking about videography, which I was trying to hold out, here. <laughs> we can go um, wherever you want. So it. so I I believe like Cameron Doyle YouTube channel. I, your editing skills are exceptionally good. Oh, and bro. I believe the content that you produce, what you do for Australia, what you do for South Australia, is such good content that I can't believe you don't have 100,000 subs. Yeah. Oh, I, the last year I've, I've chilled out on posting itself. But, yeah, there was a time there where I used to get very frustrated and then I have people like yourself in the corner and go, like, why don't you have those all the subs? And I'm like, I don't know, man. I'm not gaming the system. I'm not. There's no like hot girls' bums coming out of pools or something like that. I suppose it's a someone with 110 kilograms of twisted steel and sex appeal on his frame, like running out of pools. I don't know. I don't know. But um, yeah, I kind of. I don't. I didn't give up or anything like that. I just. I just came to terms with you know sometimes it's an algorithmically based game and. Uh, and I didn't really want to play it. I wanted to do what I wanted to do on my, all of my socials and uh, go from there. So. With regards to sex appeal, yeah, selling views, yeah. Do you want to elaborate on that bit? Because you are you are right. I, I'm not saying my content's brilliant, but we can blame Ollie if it's not. <laughs> um, but that. but but the the reality is, if you are showing some tits and ass, um, hot chicks, you know, chicks at a pillow fight, like you know, you're making great con. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I think it's just I think it's just an easy hook. As in, like, if if nothing else, sex sells, so you just add some hot chicks in there. But if if you're actually making content that is engaging the whole way through, without all that stuff, without even using drones and all that sort of stuff, and you and you're actually pushing the story, and that's the main thing. I think that's more valuable, which is why I guess I don't have a hundred thousand followers. I've only got five k on my YouTube channel and all of my other things. But yeah, do you think that people overdo it? In regards to trying to do the sex sells, because it's the same. It was like the old days when, you know, they used to say sex sells. Yeah. And now this day, more modern, anyone can do it. You know, Ollie posts videos of his mates all, you know, around the pool and, you know, all wearing short shorts and stuff like that. You know, it, that's what gets, you know, clicks, doesn't it? Yeah, I think, I think like with like five, six years ago as well, I keep going back to there because that's when I really fell in love with YouTube and, and whatnot. You really saw like that. Um, in influx of all of that clickbait sort of generation of YouTuber coming from places like Vine, like yep. your Logan Pauls, your David Dobricks and all that sort of stuff. And you see the thumbnails from back in the day. They're all like, oh, I can't believe she did this with the girl, the bum out. Yeah. He's really close. He's probably topless or something like that. I just usually look at Logan Paul as, a, as an example. I, I think I – think, um, no, they, they just come from that because you've got to hook people within the seven seconds. And, and, and if you don't, with all of these crazy 
action Michael Bay sort of explosions and hot chicks and boom, slow-mo and all that sort of stuff. People are going to get bored and it's made people want that even more, I guess. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, are we talking about South Australian people, the Racka Racka boys? Oh, yeah. They're over there. They're the, I think they're the, the Hannah Montana, best of both, both, best of both worlds. <laughs> Jeez, I butchered that. But, but do you know what I mean? They're so good at editing and storytelling and all the craziness that goes on. It doesn't des- necessarily need all the sex sales, but then they just happen to, I don't know if they still are because I haven't watched it in a little while, ha- be dating one of the, the biggest porn stars in the game. Um, and also, and also, you know, the cousins, are, you know, she's, she's a rigoramus. She's, she's hot as well. So they use her and, and she's happy to be used for that sort of thing. And it all comes together in this beautiful, just chaotic, painting of 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 craziness because they produce such cool content it's it's nuts and and south australian just from here i mean you know what and if they ever listen to this i want them on the (laughs) podcast i want them they haven't returned my uh messages but stooges (laughs) but to get it to get people to put the art to the content what you film it that's one thing yeah you edit it that's another thing and then how you deliver it so in regards to you as a videographer, you know, I don't know what your title is, but Who knows it's, anymore? It's, I'm saying YouTube superstar, <laughs> videographer extraordinaire, and you you say it how it is, and that's the part that I think your your followers, and I'm assuming you'd have high engagement, yeah, uh, is because they're really interested in what Cameron Doyle's doing. Yeah, I guess so. I think I, I, I'd like to, like I said before, with the the not putting you know the bums and stuff like that. I don't live that existence. Like I've got a girlfriend, but she's not always in bikinis and stuff. She doesn't really like the water, so I'm not going to throw her into a pool. Like it's not the existence that I live. I just want to like be my goofy self in a way that people understand what I do, how I do, and why I do. And I think yeah, the backing South Australia and and just getting outside is is a part of that.